Namaste, everybody. Welcome to episode three of my series on Bansuri Innovations. I finished off episode two, asking the question, does the Bansuri have weaknesses? Let us get to the answer straight away. All instruments have their own strengths and weaknesses, and the Bansuri is no exception. Therefore, there is always room for improvement, no matter how big or small. All flutes have some inherent weaknesses not, that not much can be done about. Let us look at some of these most important inherent weaknesses. Firstly, let me just start off saying that there's no such thing as a perfectly tuned flute, no matter what other flutists might say. What seems perfect to one flutist will not seem so to another, because there are always differences in blowing techniques, embouchure, and angle of attack. A well-made flute is one that only requires very subtle adjustments that come automatically and intuitively to a pair of well-tuned ears to play all notes in tune. It is the vibrating column of air from the blowhole to the first open hole that produces the sound. Because of the fixed length of the vibrating column of air to each musical note, it is necessary to make use of harmonics or overtones to get higher octave notes. For notes from the lower pa to the tivrma, the notes produced are those that are natural to the length of the column of air that is being vibrated and are based on making the fundamental or first harmonic, the dominant note. Notes from Madhimapa to Tivrma are based on changing the blowing to suppress the first harmonic and emphasize the second harmonic. Now, whenever you change the blowing, harder blowing, narrower stream, etc., that will invariably cause a change in frequency, which will require an adjustment on the part of the flautist. Again, a well-made flute is one that only requires very subtle adjustments that come automatically and intuitively to a pair of well-tuned ears to play all notes in tune. The next inherent weakness is about tonal consistency. The second octave in a flute always seems to be weaker in terms of tonal characteristics than the first regardless of what kind of flute, whether it's a Western concert flute or an Indian bansuri or whatever. To understand this, one needs to know about flute harmonics. Some time ago, I did a video on understanding the harmonics, on flute harmonics, that is still available on this channel for those interested. Here are two frequency analyzing graphs. The one on the left is a computer-generated tone of Sruti E4 at 349 hertz. This is how it sounds. Pretty boring, isn't it? The one on the right is the same Shruti, but has four additional overtones added, as you can see in the graph. This is how this sounds. Already, you can see that the sound is getting more interesting. The reason why a flute, for that matter, any musical instrument, sounds so nice is the presence of many, many harmonics. The different makeup of harmonics, both in intensity and frequency, is what separates the different tonal characteristics of different instruments. Here on the left is a frequency graph of the sa played on an E bass bansuri. On the right is the frequency graph of the next octave sa played on the same bansuri. Here are the two sa's. In the first graph, the most dominant sound is the fundamental or first harmonic which is the first peak you see on the left. But it is followed by many other harmonics having significant 
volume compared to the fundamental. In the second graph, the fundamental is subdued and second harmonic is the dominant one. That is why you're hearing the second octave sa. What is pertinent here is that the series of harmonics following the dominant one is different between the two graphs. The first graph has many more harmonics closer to the dominant one in terms of volume than the second one. Overall, there are more harmonics, harmonic frequencies crowded together. This is what makes the first octave sa sound richer in tone than the second octave sa. This is the reason why a flute sounds so much nicer in the mandra saptak. You don't have this consistency problem in stringed instruments. The different notes are played by varying the length of the vibrating string and or changing to a different string. The different string might have different thickness, for example. Here, the fundamental is always the dominant note and you never have to suppress the fundamental. So you're always getting the full spectrum of harmonics. In considering what are the areas that the Bansuri falls short in, we should not be comparing it with our other instruments. There's no point in saying that the piano is capable of seven octaves, the Western concert flute is capable of three and a half octaves, whereas the Bansuri can only do two and a half. The, West, the piano, the Western concert flute, sitar, vena, violin, etc., are completely different instruments. There's no point in making comparisons with them. We're also not considering here the construction of the blowhole that is a whole topic on its own and I might cover this later on. We're not considering different materials here such as plastics, metals, carbon fiber, etc. That again is another big topic which I might again cover at a later point in time. What is under consideration here is comparing existing techniques to what is possible with a blowhole and a bunch of tone holes or finger structure. In episode four, we will identify the shortfalls of existing techniques. But before we do that, it is essential to highlight essential features of the Bansuri from the point of view of both science and practical observations. I shall call these Bansuri properties. The listing of these Bansuri properties is the main focus of this episode three. In episode four, we can then exa examine whether existing playing techniques are used to maximum effect within the limitations of the Bansuri. The Bansuri properties can be divided into two categories, tone hall properties and finger mechanics properties. The tone hall size affects frequency, volume, and the harmonics, and therefore the tone also. In general, the larger the tone hall, the higher the frequency and higher the volume. And conversely, the smaller the tone hall, the smaller the volume and the frequency. How the tone hall affects harmonics and therefore the tone is a little bit more complicated thing and that's something that might be addressed in a future issue. The placement of the tone hole and the size of the tone hole should be considered jointly. Practical experience shows that the tone holes should be larger the further from the blow hole. Tone hole property two. A fully open tone hole is much better than a partial open tone hole for many reasons. Firstly, a fully open tone hole produces greater volume. It's also easier and faster to open and close. If you have to close partially a tone hole to produce a particular shruti, you're never absolutely sure that you've got the, you got the 
correct amount of closure. And this is especially true for students. And so that's always a problem. So playing comal notes for students is always a little difficult because um, they have not yet developed ears to um, know exactly what if they're doing correctly or not. Um, whereas this is not a problem with a fully open tone hole. Therefore, fully open tone hole makes through the alignment easier. The tone is also much better. Partial closure dampens the vibration. You can feel the vibration of a tone hole by just when you blow across here in the first open tone hole, you just feel around it, you'll see a nice vibration. It feels really nice. And if you're going to partially close it, you're dampening the vibration and that's going to have an Im impact on the tonal qualities. Let me illustrate to you graphically what I mean when I say when you half close a hole, it affects the tonal characteristics. The graph on the left shows the frequency graph for the mandra pa on a E bass bouncery with the top six finger holes closed. Graph on the right is the frequency graph of the mandra komal pa on the same bouncery with the fifth hole half open. You can immediately, let me turn on the sound here. You can see a big difference between the first and the second sound. The second sound is the komal da. You can immediately see a major difference in both volume and tonal characteristic. Tone hole property three. The impact of partial closure gets worse with increasing distances from blowhole. The difference in volume and tonal quality between ga and komal ga is less than between pa and komal da. Now let's get to the finger mechanics property. The first property is that the more relaxed your hands, entire arm in fact, and fingers are, the more relaxed they are, the more you can do with them. The more flexibility to reach tone holes, the faster opening and closing of tone holes, and easier to partially close tone holes whenever you need to do so. And therefore also much easier to do the various ornamentations that are needed in Indian classical music. Finger, the finger mechanics property too. The relaxation of your fingers is entirely dependent on the closeness of the fingers to each other. Firstly, the closeness of to each other of the four fingers, that is the point or index finger, the middle finger, the ring finger, and the small finger. Generally, the closer these fingers are to each other, the more relaxed they are. Now, the relaxation of the whole hand also depends on the distance between the thumb and the four playing fingers. Now, when you take a, a standard e bass bansuri, it, it's a fairly thin tube. And therefore, the thumb is close to the three fingers, the, the fingers above. And to me, this is a little uncomfortable because the thumb is too close to make it comfortable. On the other hand, if I take the same e base bansuri, take a, a bansuri that is thicker, see, this is a much thicker bansuri, which means that the outside diameter is bigger than the other standard bansuri that I said, I feel much more comfortable here because, because of the thickness of the 
Bansuri, my thumb is a little away from the fingers. Now, for shorter flutes, it doesn't matter so much. It's, it's In fact, it's better if the thumb is closer to the fingers. It will be very difficult to play a, bans a very fat bansuri, but a much shorter pitch, because then uh, it'll be like this, and that makes the finger very difficult. So there's a really an optimal distance between the thumb and the other fingers um, for the greatest relaxation. Another factor is that the comfort relationship between the finger distances varies from person to person. We all have different finger sizes, strengths, and flexibility. And therefore, it makes absolute sense that for professional Bansuri players especially, it, they, the Bansuri should be custom built to suit their particular finger structure. Finger mechanics, property three. It's best to use the fingertip whenever possible to close, open and close a hole. The most sensitive part of a finger is by far the fingertip. This makes the fingertip the best part of the finger to open and close, as you can really feel the vibrations there. So your playing can be a lot more sensitive. Also, the fingertip is where many important nerve endings are. Nerves that connect to the various chakras in our bodies and important nerve centers. This obviously has a lot of healing implications too. There's another important reason why using the fingertip is the best. And we now come to finger mechanics property four. Using fingertip provides the greatest leverage. Let me explain what I mean here. Suppose this is the hole you want to close, but you want to use almost the base of the finger to open and close. You have to move your finger quite a bit to properly open and close. If you use your fingertip, on the other hand, you don't need to move it much, just a little bit more. And what this means is that you can open and close the finger holes much faster because you don't have to move it so much. So we have a bunch of fingers and a bunch of tone holes to open and close. So we come to finger mechanics property five. We have to allocate the workload between the fingers according to finger flexibility to get the most out of playing the flute. Now let's look at what, which fingers are the most flexible. The thumb is by far the most flexible because it has got so much room for movement. And surprisingly, it's then followed by the little finger because the little finger also has a pretty wide range of movement. And then you have the index finger followed by the ring finger. The ring finger in many ways is connected uh, structurally to the little finger. Then the, the least flexible is the, is the middle finger because it's bounded on two sides by fingers here. In terms of strength, the thumb is again the strongest, and the middle finger is, is the second strongest. But for playing flute, flexibility is more important than strength, because you don't really need much strength to open and close a hole. And if, you, if, you, if you're, one of your fingers is particularly weak, you can always strengthen it by doing exercises. That brings to a close the tone hole properties and finger mechanics properties that I wanted to consider here. If you think there are other things that uh, more important things that I've missed out, please feel free to comment below. Before we wind up, a, a word on using a key mechanisms as in a Western concert flute versus using your raw fingertips. Given a choice, using fingertips for opening and closing is preferred to, to using keys and buttons. 
Um, and the reason is that um, in with Western concert flutes, even with the so-called open hole con uh, concert flutes, um, it's it's you're not really going to get be able to do all the ornamentations required of Indian classical music. Given the properties we've examined above, let us imagine how our hands would be like if God had designed them mainly for playing the Bansuri. The Bansuri would have 12 controllable tone holes, one each for the 12 notes in the octave, the Sa, Pa, and two each for Re, Ga, Ma, Da, and Ni to ensure that no half closures are necessary because um, we have seen that a full closure, a full open hole is much better than a half open hole for many reasons. Each of our hands would have seven fingers, the thumb to hold, plus six playing fingers on each hand. Each fingers would be long enough so that the fingertip can be used to close the respective tone holes and do so in a most relaxed manner. Fortunately, God and evolution have designed our hands for serving other more important survival functions than just playing a bansuri. However, this visualization can help to set an ultimate goal for us to achieve in the construction of the Bansuri tone holes and the method of optimally using our available finger mechanics. The ultimate goal will never be achievable, of course, but can provide a framework or path to direct us to suggest improvements to our techniques. This is what we'll begin to see in episode four and fourth.